Hey guys, it's Jenny, and in this video, I got a request to record something from Rubank, Volume 2, for clarinet, on page 22, number 2. <laughs> I'm going to record top line only, and I'm going to do it without repeats, and then I'll give you some tips on how to practice afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and play it now. because the car went by and it's snowing <laughs> completely today um so I was confused as why his car was going I also had a little bit of spit let's see if I can show you can you see my clarinet looks so hmm yeah there we go it was focusing on my face um so one of my notes didn't speak whoop <laughs> as well as I wanted so <sighs> let's go back to the very start one of the biggest things about this piece is making sure we have our articulations. So we have staccatos, which are short and separated. We have slurs and we have these or these. I don't know since I'm on my phone which way this is going to flip me. Our accents. I think just with the style of this piece, the accents don't need to be so heavy. You just need to think them more as a weight. So we have an accent on the second note. So it shouldn't be a heavy like ta ta. I'm just leaning on the note because if we look underneath it, it says dolce, which means sweet, and we're also piano. So to have something too harsh wouldn't fit the character of the piece. So our staccatos, we want to think tut, 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 tut. So I'm just putting a little more emphasis on the accent and note. Bum, bee, da, ba, bum, but I'm not changing the tempo. Um, I wasn't given a tempo, so I just chose what I felt was appropriate. It's allegretto, so it needs to be on the quick side. Obviously, if you have a metronome marking for it, if you're playing it for, here I am not knowing where to look, if you're playing it for an all-county or honors band or all-state, um, go with the metronome marking that they gave you. So, we have our staccato, and then we want to lean on the accent. <laughs> And the piece goes quick, so it's just a, a quick little lean, a little push of the shoulder. Okay, so we have that for the first four measures. And then we have a very similar phrase, but forte. So we want to make sure that we have a big dynamic contrast. You have to play your piano loud enough for people to hear. It is your solo. Then you have to bump it up to forte. So from the beginning... And then when we get to the forte, and now let's look at the second line, first measure. We have all of these 16th notes. And for those who haven't played in 6-8 before, I should have started with that. 6 eights are time signature. So we have six beats in a measure and an eighth note gets one beat. So when we're here on the second line with this second line first measure with all the 16th notes, we just count that one and two and three and four and five and six and. And it sounds like this. With the A flats in both places. So a good way to practice this, because we're in the key of E flat. I wanted to make sure before I had to uh, change what I said. We're in the key of E flat major. So you really want to be able to play your E flat major scale from E flat to E flat, hopefully up to high E flat. There's that spit again, made me squeak. Do we go below? 
No, we don't. I was going to give you some advice to practice the E flat major scale going lower than this E flat. <laughs> which would be a full range E flat major scale. That's not a half bad thing to do, but the range that we have in this piece is only within starting on this E flat. And I think the highest we go when it's a scale section is up to the B flat with the same fingering. So just make sure you practice that slowly. You could do it with different rhythms. And some others, um, other combinations of rhythms. So if you have to do the repeat, then you go back to the beginning, you play it again. But let's go to after the first repeat, which we're still on the second line. We have a piano and we have the word dolce again, which means sweetly. So this we have no staccatos, it's all slurred. <laughs> So if we look at the last measure of the second line, we have a grace note. So a grace note, you could do two ways. It either happens before the beat, it's a really quick note before the beat, or it happens on the beat. Uh, I think in this instance, for this piece, we want it before the beat. So we have F, E flat, D, and then we rearticulate the D really quickly and go D, C, B flat, A. So let me play that for you. And then up to tempo, it would sound like this. And now we go to the third line, which is tricky and gave me some trouble when I was practicing it. So we have the same notes in the first measure of the third line as we do in the last measure of the second line. But they change the articulation, so make sure you get that. So instead of us having slurred in threes, we have slur two, tongue one. And what you want to do is a tongue cut off, which is where we stop the air, not the air, the sound. We stop the sound with our tongue by putting our tongue back on our reed. So we would play F, E flat, and after the E flat sounded, we put our tongue back on the reed. It sounds harsh when you're doing it slow. But when you do it fast, you don't hear it that much. You just hear a lovely staccato. So we only have to do the tongue cutoffs if you have a staccato that's after a slurred note, which we have here. And then we have the grace note. And we tongue cut off on the B flat before the A. So I'm going to start the last measure of the second line of music and go on to the first measure of the third. So same notes, same rhythms, but different articulations. Then we have, I'll play it for you. Now, I did something that's not exactly written which is if we look in the middle of the third line we have a ritardando um, it's marked retard with the dot right so that means to slow down hmm. i stretched it i moved it in my mind to happen when we first had the a flats i think that sounds nice but it is not what's written so i'm going to go ahead and play from the second measure of the third line how it's written which is this to me it sounds too rushed and I think the retard should happen when the A flats first occur so and I'm really only stretching the second starting, I'm starting to stretch the second A flat of the third measure of the third line. Um, that would be something that I would ask if you have a private teacher or your band teacher, what they recommend. If it were my students, I would recommend slowing down there. But note that that is not what's written.
the retard is only written um, where it's written for those three notes with the grace notes. And when we have those three notes with the grace notes, we need to play the C, the second note of the three of the retardando. We need to play it right hand C. It might look like it's my left hand. I don't know how this is flipping it because the next note we're going to is E flat. So go ahead. I marked it in. I always mark it in. I never remember. All right, so we have our retardando. Mm -hmm. And then take a breath. And the one thing that's not marked that should be marked when we have the ah tempo and the dolce is marked piano. Um, I think we get excited and the first few times that I played through, I wanted to play it forte. But if you look down on the fourth line, then we have the forte again like it is before. So we want to make sure after we do the retardando that we're quiet. So let me play it for you again. And then forte. This is exactly the same as the first eight measures, I believe. One exception that threw me off. Look, one, two, three, fourth line down, second measure, where we have the forte written, it's a D. Make sure you play a D. The first time through when we have this melody, it's a B flat. Okay, make sure you play the D. That's what it's supposed to be. I don't know why my phone's making sound because I turned the sound off, so I apologize. <laughs> then we come into our last section, which is the last two lines. We start piano. Um, but there's almost an immediate crescendo. You have four notes before we start crescendoing, and we go from piano all the way up to forte. And luckily, those is the same run from the second line. So once you learn it once, we just put it somewhere else in the piece. And then we're going to do the tongue cut off there. This is the forte at the end of one, two, three, four, at the end of the fifth line. So we do the tongue cut off on the C in the last measure of the fifth line and the A flat. Make sure you're playing A flats. Mark them if you need to. Again, we have our run. The only difference is that the E flat, oh, is it always a staccato? It's not always a staccato, but most of the time it's a staccato. Our very lowest note of that run. Now, I can't tell you for some reason why I had so much trouble with the last one, two, two and a half bars. And I figured out it's because they throw in these Ds. Um, because you're expecting it to be an E flat major arpeggio, which is E flats, B flats, I'm saying it the wrong order, E flats, G's, and B flats. And they throw in D's and it really tricked me. So I ended up writing in the D's so I'd play them correctly. My only suggestion there is practice that a lot because it's confusing. Your fingers probably aren't going to want to go to the D. Um, and that's where they're supposed to. So the only way I could help myself was to write in the Ds. I'm not a big, uh, I don't like when my students write in notes, uh, but sometimes your brain needs the help. So write them in. If you're having a problem remembering to play D and not E flat, I would just write it in. All right, let me know if you have any other questions or you need anything else recorded, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!